Hi, my name is Julius Reed, and I'm going to try and explain the debt crisis to you in less than 10 minutes. I highly recommend watching the whole video. It's a really important issue. And don't worry if you know absolutely nothing about finance. I'll explain everything. But let's start off with the fundamentals to get your financial knowledge up to scratch. In our current monetary system, all money printed into existence is issued by the central bank. The central bank is an institution which controls every single aspect of a currency, and each currency has their own central bank. They can create money, destroy money, set interest rates, you name it. The way they issue money is by lending it to various institutions so that it can be circulated throughout the economy. This includes the government and creditors, such as the bank you put your money in. So, in a very simplified hypothetical, let's say that you wanted to be the very first creditor into existence. You'd go to the central bank and borrow money, and let's assume you only needed $100 to start out. The central bank would lend you $100 with interest. If that interest rate was 5%, that would mean that you'd have a net debt of $105. However, if all money printed into existence comes from the central bank, how is it possible to pay off any interest without borrowing more money and getting into more debt? Answer, you can't. What this means is that there will always be more debt than actual money. If the interest rate is set at 5%, there will always be 5% more debt than money available. In other words, all money is nothing more than unpayable debt. But don't get me wrong, I'm no economist. The way this debt-based system works is that the economy must constantly outgrow its debt in order to sustain itself. It's assumed that the money borrowed is used to create wealth, which fuels growth by encouraging more borrowing. The key word here is borrowing. Borrowing money creates debt, including interest. It's this interest that fuels further borrowing and thus hopefully facilitating growth. Confused? Here's an example. So Tim here borrows $50 from your bank at 7% interest. Obviously, the interest rate for your bank needs to be higher than the rate that you borrowed your money from, so to make a profit. Tim then uses that money to buy an axe and proceeds to cut down all the trees in his backyard to produce some wood, and he sells that wood to the public, making $75 in total. So he goes back to your bank and pays off his debt of the $50 plus that 7% interest, and he comes on top with a net profit of $21.5. But what about those people who bought Tim's wood? Where did they get their money from? Assuming they received their money from the same bank, your bank that is, at 7% interest, they now have a net debt of Tim's profit of the $21.5 times the 7% interest, which comes to roughly $23. Debt that has to be paid back to your bank. But who knows, maybe those people needed that wood to heat a kitchen and a restaurant to serve customers, or maybe they used it to build furniture to sell to the public. All the money generated from those businesses goes towards paying off their own personal debts, preferably back to your own bank. Yet, how about their customers and their debt? So as you can see, all you're doing is trading wealth for debt. The interest on that debt forces more borrowing to pay off that interest, and hopefully that borrowing can be used to create wealth. As we've established, debt facilitates growth. It's assumed that by borrowing money, you're using it efficiently to create wealth. However, that's far from the case. Ignoring the fact that GDP is mostly a fake measure of wealth, the debt-to-GDP ratio is a relatively good indication of whether money is being spent efficiently to create wealth. GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product, and it's basically a measure of the total wealth of the services and goods in a country at any given time. Here's a graph measuring the debt-to-GDP ratio of Australia. As you can tell, Australia currently has around 160% debt-to-total worth. Now let's look at America. America has a private debt-to-GDP ratio of around 260%. Including public debt, the figure is more like 360%, which means that there's roughly 3.6 times more debt than wealth. In a perfect society, the debt-to-GDP ratio should equal the amount of interest. Therefore, each country should have a debt-to-GDP ratio of around 7%, assuming a set interest rate of 7%. Yet, how does this all relate to the debt crisis? According to the website usdebtclock.org, total US debt comes in at roughly 55 trillion US dollars, and that includes public and private debt. 
yet their GDP is only worth a mere 15 trillion US dollars, including unfunded liabilities such as Medicare and Social Security. Total US debt comes to more than 170 trillion US dollars. I'm sure you can do the math, and that's just America. Italy, Portugal, Spain, Germany, France, England, and Greece all have an external debt to GDP ratio of over 100%. Ireland has an external debt to GDP ratio of 1,103%. Now, there are thousands of reasons that have led us to this current day of the debt crisis, and I'll try and cover them in other videos. In a nutshell, however, two things happened. As you can tell from the figures, we've been living beyond our means on borrowed money we knew we could never pay back, all while the government manipulated us through our financial ignorance. The fact is that tax revenue can't pay for most government services, so instead we borrowed that money with little hope of paying it back. According to the US federal budget of 2010, over 49% of the budget was a deficit, meaning that the government had to borrow 49% of the cash to pay for all the services. If that sounds sustainable to you, please stop watching this video. Also, thankfully for the politicians in power, a majority of the population have no grasp of even basic economics and finance. A classic example is inflation. Theoretically, there should be zero inflation in a functioning society. However, we're led to believe that some inflation is good. In reality, it's nothing more but a hidden tax. This relates to the deficit, but I'll explain it another time. Since most people lack an understanding of the mysterious ways of money, politicians can get away with making crappy fiscal decisions, which essentially have gotten us to the point where we are today, on the verge of complete global financial meltdown. So, if we already have all this debt, why hasn't the system imploded yet? Well, it's imploding as we speak. The tipping point was the 2008 global financial crisis. World governments are literally on life support as they take every unsustainable measure to postpone default. Governments literally have two options at this stage. They can either default on their debt, start from scratch, and admit the fact that they will never be able to pay back their debt, or they can follow the current path of borrowing their way into an inevitable default. World governments are literally borrowing billions and trillions of dollars to merely pay off prior debt, which obviously puts them in more debt. Eventually, you get to the point where you struggle to even borrow enough money to pay for the interest payments on your debt. The borrowing and printing of all this money will cause hyperinflation, and your savings, pension, and all the cash you own in the bank will become worthless overnight. It happened to Germany during World War II, so it's certainly not absurd. In fact, every single debt-based system in history has ended in mass devaluation and eventual collapse. This time is really no different. Now, in this video, I merely aimed at addressing the fundamentals of the problem in the most simple and articulate way possible. I decided to make this video to get the message out there to the common person, because I once was in your position not long ago, but through months of research, I think I've become informed enough to tell the tale. Not to mention, this is going to look great on my CV. Through my website, you can learn everything that I have, but in a much shorter period of time. After all, I'm only the convenient middleman. I have no financial qualifications, and I'm only 18. But I have a passion to help others, and I'm just really damn smart. I'll tell you all the people I followed and all the research I did, so think of this as the ultimate hub or resource. In fact, there's a disgusting amount of content that I haven't addressed, and it would take hours to explain everything. But put simply, we're looking at the biggest global depression in human history, but luckily there's still time to prepare. The sad thing, however, is that it's already been built in. It's only a matter of when things get bad and what you can do to minimize your losses. And don't think you're safe because you're not invested in the stock market or real estate. The coming events will affect everyone. Currencies worldwide will devalue and your cash will become worthless. So if you would like to learn more about what you can do to prepare for the coming collapse and education on financial topics, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and please do check out the website. And thank you for watching.